Hey guys, and welcome back to another GCSE revision video. Now, lots of you were really keen to see predictions on your upcoming Macbeth exam. Lots of you were asking if myself and Mr. Sallies could go over what we think is gonna come up in this year's exam. And the best way to make any predictions is to look at what questions came up historically before then thinking, okay, can we see any patterns, any trends, and then guess, perhaps make an educated guess as to what could come up, okay? So myself and Mr. Sales want to firstly begin by going over literally from 2017 all the way to 2023, what questions, what past questions came up, and then what do we think, according to what we've seen, will come up in this year's Macbeth GCSE exams, okay? Yes. Yeah. So let's do it. To start off, when the first round of exams happened in 2017, according to the current syllabus, you had an extract from Act 1, Scene 5, where you had Lady Macbeth. Basically, after she's read a letter from Macbeth telling her about the witches, she then plots on how she can manipulate him. She thinks about, you know, the fact that he's too full of the milk of human kindness and she wants to pour mind spirits in thine ear in order to change his attitude towards committing regicide okay so she's plotting and the question asked students how Shakespeare presents ambition so this question was actually like a really nice question because it was a nice general theme question whereby you could obviously start with Lady Macbeth but you actually weren't very restricted to the theme of ambition what do you think yeah it was a really good question to choose and AQA thought let's broaden this out so we'll start with a Lady Macbeth speech and that allows students to write about both characters when mm. they're writing about ambition and as soon as you write about more than one character your answer will be more sophisticated and AQA when they started this exam were encouraging students to have more sophisticated arguments. I think that's possibly changed maybe not we'll see as we go through. So the second paper that came up was Macbeth and Banquo together and they were looking at the attitudes to the supernatural how they both react differently to the witches now here it's a theme question again and that automatically invites you to write in a more sophisticated way mm. because when you write about a theme you have to write about Shakespeare's ideas when you write about Shakespeare's ideas you're more at the top of the mark scheme so AQA were really ambitious for students then and I think that was a really great choice, and we'll come back to it later. Okay, so that was the 2018 exam, contrasting the attitudes of Macbeth and Banco towards the supernatural. Now in 2019, AQA suddenly switched to focusing on character questions. So this, you were presented, or students sit in this exam, were presented with an extract from Act 1, Scene 2, where you've got the captain basically talking about, you know, how brave Macbeth was when he was fighting on the battlefield, and obviously this really impressed King Duncan. And the question was to do with how Macbeth is presented as a violent character. Now this question is really interesting because Firstly, it now kind of forced students to focus squarely on Macbeth as a character. It was also a little bit more restrictive in terms of what you could talk about. However, that still meant that you were expected to firstly talk about how violence is portrayed in a really positive way initially in Macbeth before his violence is then turned negatively against Scotland and of course he then becomes increasingly corrupted with ambition right so I think this question was obviously kind of like a more straightforward question but I'm curious in terms of like yeah. analysis how did maybe you think in terms of student performance then? Well because you went straight into the analysis because we're English teachers that's what we do and so you went immediately into what does the theme of violence show us the problem with a question like that is as a student you can realize you could, sorry, you could answer it and just say, well, Macbeth is violent at the beginning, he's violent later on when he kills Banquo, he's violent when he gets Macduff's family killed, and you just write about Macbeth's violence without ever thinking about what Shakespeare's saying about violence, mm. and you just write about him as a character. The AQA examiners are obsessed, and I think this is a good obsession, with the idea of characters as constructs, like Shakespeare creates the characters in order to show his ideas. But the problem is when you get a character question, when you're in the exam as a student, it's quite easy to forget the idea of the construct. And so you've got to think extra hard when you get a character question, mm. how am I going to get the top grades? Okay, so what came up in the 2020 paper? So another problem, this is where uh, 
I don't like the character questions because it's much easier for you not to get the answers that are going to get you the top grades. So in 2020, the character was Lady Macbeth. Brilliant, main character, you know lots about her. But it just says, write about her changes in the play. Well, you could write about all her changes and still not get a very high grade mm -hmm. unless you said, what does Shakespeare want the audience to understand about those changes? Mm -hmm. What do they symbolise and represent? And then that gets you into the themes of the play, the Christian idea of Eve and original sin and how women were viewed as more evil and corrupted mm. than men. So you have to get into that to get into the top grades. But you wouldn't know that from the question. You might just write about Lady Macbeth as she seems in the play and not get a top grade. Okay, now for the 2021 question, AQA carried on a focus on characters and specifically you were presented with the act uh, two scene two whereby Macbeth after killing the king he's really traumatized and he says you know um, sleep no more Macbeth not sleep no more right and you've got this interesting contrast between his reaction to the death of the king which obviously he's committed regicide and he feels really guilty he feels really really frightened of what he's done versus Lady Macbeth who actually seems very cold, very cruel, very callous, and she also is really irritated by his uh, attitude towards regicide, right? Now, the question asked you to contrast how the relationship between Lady Macbeth and Macbeth is shown. So in this question, you have two characters that you had to talk about and you are expected or you were expected for this question to contrast their attitudes and also to contrast their relationship, okay? Now, uh, as you've mentioned before, kind of character questions can be a little bit harder to get kind of the top band marks, right? So for this question, what do you think students can think about when they're considering the relationship between the two? Well, I'd go back again to what you were just pulling out, the contrast. If you think about why Lady Macbeth contrasts with Macbeth, immediately you're going back to, well, what Shakespeare's saying about them. Mm. And the really interesting thing there is how far she manipulates him versus how far she just gives him license to do what he wants to do anyway. Mm. It doesn't manipulate him at all. He was going to do it, but he just he's got an opportunity to blame his wife. Um, so as soon as you start looking at two characters together, it's much easier to write about, well, why Shakespeare done that? Mm. And it's much easier to get those top grades. Okay, so for last year's exam, oh no, 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 no the year before, the yes. 2022 exam, what came up? Yeah, so we had uh, Macbeth's speech about Vanquo, our fears in him stick deep, um, and it was all about Macbeth's fears. So th this is again a character question where you could easily go wrong just writing yeah. out the character. But I think AQA, by linking Macbeth's fears in, it's asking you to think what's the purpose of making Macbeth afraid? And is he in fact afraid? What's he afraid of? Here, if he's afraid of Banquo, he's afraid about the witch's prophecies. He's also afraid about not having an heir and being able to pass that on um, through history and so you've got ideas of kingship so this was actually quite a cool question because it forced you to think about themes mm. um, the danger though and this is a big danger for me with having the questions based on the extract is it would be really easy just to write about Macbeth's fears in the extract all the time okay. uh, and then not think about why Shakespeare was writing about those particular fears and then you get to the end of the play where really you're going to say, oh, well, he's not really afraid. And then apparently when he fights Macduff, he says, um, no, I'm not going to fight you. He is afraid. And you wouldn't know how to deal with those two contradictions where he goes into battle and says, you know, who's he that was not born of woman? S such a one am I to fear. He goes looking for that person. And then when he finds him, he says, no, I'm not going to fight you. Uh, I think most students don't think about why that happens, why that change happens. And so you'd kind of be stuck in the exam saying, well, he's not afraid, but then he is, uh, and not be able to resolve that conflict. Okay. Um, so you've got to think through in advance, what does Shakespeare want us to think about those fears? Have you got any ideas? What, what does he want us to think about those fears? I think in terms of thinking about Macbeth's fears, firstly, I think what this is illustrating is how he becomes increasingly paranoid and fearful. 
because of ambition, which makes him a shadow of his former self, right? So I think one of the messages that Shakespeare is trying to convey through Macbeth's fears and his paranoia of Banco is just how corrupting ambition can be, right? This is, you know, when you follow your ambition, this is what this turns in you into, right? You go from being this great celebrated general to this fearful, paranoid person that just goes in a killing rampage in order to control and to maximize your power, right? So I think that's the main kind of message you want to discuss if you're thinking about Macbeth's fears, Macbeth's paranoia, say for instance, if you did get a question to do with his paranoia, you want to always think about Shakespeare's overarching message. Nice. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so for last year, okay, so this is June exams just gone, or maybe gone a few months ago, you were presented, or students who sat this exam were presented with this interesting speech from Macbeth and Satan, one of his generals, right? And a lot of students, especially walking out of the exam, were like, that was a really random extract, right? So this is after Macbeth uh, hears of his wife's death or by suicide, but also we can see here that Macbeth is a completely different person. Here he seems like a tyrant and he's speaking to Satan. And the question says how Macbeth is presented as a male character who changes, which is a little bit similar in terms of wording to the Lady Macbeth as a character who changes, which was tested in 2020. Now this question, of course, going back to what we talked about with Macbeth's fears, right? Again, it's just cut into the core of Shakespeare's message. Ambition is terrible. Remember, obviously, this play was being staged in front of the new King James. And maybe some people were sitting in the audience who didn't like the idea of having a Scottish king as leader. And so, of course, they were thinking of overthrowing him. But Shakespeare is obviously illustrating this dialogue between Macbeth and Satan to show just how corrupt Macbeth has become because he has become paranoid, he is not the chosen leader, and this is what's gonna to happen to you guys if any of you think about killing or overthrowing our current King James, right? So this question is interesting in the sense that you want to juxtapose and contrast how Macbeth was earlier on in the play, okay, and even how people talked about him and celebrated him, versus, of course, how he's presented within the extract. So what's your thoughts? Um, yeah, well, I quite like this question. Uh, well, I, I do like this question. There's two main reasons. Uh, when you talk about a character changing, you're automatically uh, following the character as a journey through the play. Uh, that makes it really easy for you to write an argument, like Shakespeare changes Macbeth to show that, and you'd link it to the consequences of ambition, for example. Mm. Um, so you can get higher grades because you're thought, thinking about Shakespeare's purpose. But the other thing I like about this is they've stuck in the word male. And so there are lots of marks for you to be able to explain how Macbeth is there as a symbol of masculinity at the time. Yeah. What Shakespeare is saying about men and their attraction to violence or reputation or ambition. And so he's not just looking at Macbeth as a character, he's looking at Macbeth as a version of what masculinity is. And as soon as you do that, you're talking about Shakespeare's ideas, top of the mark scheme straight away. Okay, so, so predictions. Predictions. Yeah. What are your thoughts? So we were having a discussion because we kind of diverged a little bit in terms of I personally feel like AQA, even if for six years in a row they're focused on characters, I think we're gonna do a little bit of the same type of question, character based question. Yes. But you had a different opinion. So I I'm I'm looking at a pattern of um, if we look back we've got Character, 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 character. Oh, theme, theme, theme. And so I'm hoping for a return to a theme. So that's where my prediction is going to be. Okay, and which theme do you think is going to come up? Uh, I'm going to pick on the theme of the supernatural for two reasons. Uh, it came up early when AQA were thinking about what's important about this play. It's still important. And the other reason I'm going to pick on it is it's easy to adapt the supernatural to every single character question that can come up. So I'll make a prediction around the supernatural and then show you how it would fit any other question. Okay, well I believe that AQA, as uh, Mr. Sellers has pointed out, right, you had ambition, which is a theme question, then supernatural, and then afterwards, for literally six years, you had Macbeth, Lady Macbeth, Lady Macbeth and Macbeth, Macbeth's fears, and then Macbeth as a male character that changes. I personally feel like it's going to be a character, but potentially a slightly different character. From my perspective, I think it's going to be 
the witches or one of the scenes where we see the witches and in all honesty the witches only appear three times one of the times in all honesty i don't think you need to pay attention to with their interaction with hecate there's two main scenes that they appear act one scene three and act four scene one I personally feel like we're going to get a question related to the witch's influence on Macbeth or even the varying attitudes of different characters towards the witches. More specifically, in all honesty, it would be maybe a repeat of perhaps the Banco and, the, um, and Macbeth how their attitudes vary towards them, but more so specifically from the witches, okay? So my personal view is there's gonna be yet another character question, but I think maybe they might add a new character, which is the witches. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go with similar. I'm gonna go with the supernatural. So not necessarily just focused on the witches because the supernatural also invites you to think about what else happens in the play that doesn't have a logical explanation. So yes, You've got the witches, but you've also got the visions that Macbeth has, for example, with the dagger. You've got him overhearing this voice after he's killed Duncan, which tells him he's going to sleep no more. You've got the strange, weird things that are happening in the night and the horses apparently eating each other um, that we get uh, once Duncan has been killed. And you've also got, if you get a supernatural question, you've also got the logic of, well, why is Shakespeare including the supernatural in the play for the first, in the first place, which would then lead you to your knowledge about demonology and King James's passion for rooting out witchcraft and believing that witchcraft had the power to attack a king. Mm. So they're very, very similar questions. Very similar. It's um, almost two sides of the same coin, right? Yes. So I'm more seeing it from a character perspective, yeah. whilst Mr. Sallies is seeing it from the supernatural theme perspective. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and the reason is I always want you to think about theme, whatever the question, because it's going to get you higher grades. Yeah, and I think with the, say for instance, you've got a character question, the witches, right? Or the influence of the witches either in Macbeth or on both Macbeth and Banquo. Obviously, when you're thinking about any discussion to do the witches slash supernatural, the witches are always presented as agents of chaos, okay? That's the first and major thing you want to always point out and highlight in any discussion about the witches. And of course, they deliberately misguide and mislead Macbeth through speaking in half-truths, through speaking in riddles. And of course, you want to discuss that. However, of course, say if you get a question whereby you're asked about the influence of the witches, on the characters, right, you want to firstly consider, of course, Banquo and Macbeth. Banquo follows Jacobean expectations of fearing the witches and not trusting them because he calls them the instruments of darkness. In contrast to Macbeth, who his Hamartia is set off, right, they plant the seeds of ambition in his mind once he begins to trust the witches, okay? So, of course, he's supposed to be a cautionary figure, right? But equally, you want to maybe think about Lady Macbeth who calls in the spirits to unsex her, right? Once more, she herself is presented and was believed to be the fourth witch. So also you wanna consider that too, okay? Lady Macbeth and that kind of interesting interaction. They never actually interact directly, but there's lo lots of elements that Shakespeare includes that presents her also as this interesting and supernatural force, okay? So I think that would be a really interesting point. Yes. Say for instance, if you were talking about the yeah. witches. Um, so I'm going to ask you about Macbeth and Banquo here. Okay. So the conventional view is that Banquo steers away from the witches. Mm. Um, but I'm always interested, once he knows that um, Duncan's been killed, he, he says, I fear thou plays most foully for mm -hmm. him, Macbeth. Yep. So he kind of believes that Macbeth has killed Duncan. Yes. But he doesn't say anything. Mm -hmm. So my reading of that is... He is also doing that because he believes the witch's prophecies. He believes if he just lets fate take its course, of course. then Fleance is going to become king and Fleance's sons will be kings. And so I see Banquo's silence as proof that he's acting on the witch's prophecies as well. Okay, so you your reckon? interpretation would be that he still believes the witches, yeah. but because he knows that his children are going to be naturally kings, he just doesn't do anything. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think you can make an argument for that. I personally take a slightly more conventional view with Banquo. I think he's kind of presented almost on the same level as Macduff as kind of the 
you know, conventional Jacobean men who Shakespeare really celebrates, okay? So Shakespeare wants to show his audience, the people who are watching, you know, this play with a new king, that this is how you should act, right? If it's within your fate, right? Remember, obviously, you're thinking about also the theme of fate and free will. It will pan out for you, right? Your children will become kings. Do what Banquo has done. But also, I personally feel like the reason why I'm taking a slightly more conventional view that Banquo is mistrusting is his response and his reaction once he learns that Macbeth has been made Thane of Cordor. Yes. He says the instruments of darkness tell us yes, the truth. to win us to our harm. Yeah, exactly. Right. So I personally would argue that yeah. Banquo still deeply mistrusts the witches. So it's an interesting question, yeah. but I personally think I would probably take a more conventional approach yeah. when it interpreting Banco's attitude. Yes. Okay? Right. Awesome. So I hope you guys found this useful in terms of what to consider with your upcoming Macbeth exams. And of course, make sure you're super familiar with all the different characters, but equally the themes.